So when I think about the fact that there is a person whose literal job is to coach trans women and to teach them how to be quote unquote more feminine, my initial reaction is a little bit of a cringe. Yeah, I feel like the idea of a cis woman teaching trans women what it means to be a woman is kind of weird. Well, just the concept of having a cis female try to show a transgender woman how to be more feminine is ridiculous because there's really no definition of what feminine is. I just think that there's no A type of woman. There are a lot of trans people out there who do not want to conform to that standard of femininity. Femininity doesn't have to be heels and a dress. It can be, yeah, I don't know, docks and pants. Like, that's what I like wearing every day and I, I think I'm feminine. If she's like, you know, showing them how to do nails, you know, hair, really get there, you know, if that's what they want. Lovely suit. Are you looking forward to burning it? I guess I'm all for it. Do you have the gray skirt? Gray skirt is folded up in here. Okay. I'm Monica Prada, and I work as a feminine image consultant. Nova She is my business, and it's a business in which I help individuals who are transgender, transitioning, or exploring gender fluidity present their best feminine self. Or if you want to, you can do the really pretty wrap dress. It's like, no, whatever. I have, I'm wearing a dress, so who cares? Yes. When I initially found out um, what Monica's job description was, the feminist in me was like, fuck that, man. What do you mean you're teaching people to be, be, be more feminine? Like, why? I've always been very conscious of the fact that I'm a woman because the way I've been treated, the way my life has been at work, at school, and I've always had a, a vagina, so society has treated me accordingly, and sometimes frustratingly. Hello, Chrissy. Hi, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Kristen Browdy. I'm an attorney. Um, so tell me, what are you guys do you want to doing today? So right now we're basically just going through the clothing that I had Chrissy bring. Most of my practice is matrimonial and family law, and I also do some civil litigation. Do the sheer black tights and the new Gucci pumps. Oh, I just like the sound of that. Yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> okay, so this looks great. Um, let me, can you step back for a second? Let me just see. Oh, it looks awesome with the shoes. Okay, so the only thing I would do is if you were gonna wear this, I would definitely cuff the sleeves. Okay. I suppose every person's different. Everyone comes here wanting something different. Yeah. But uh, Chrissy, do you want to blend in? Do you want to? Yes. Do you want to blend into society, or do you want loads of attention? Do you want people to no. notice you? Look, I'm trans. There's no way I'm not going to be trans, and I'm not ashamed of being trans. But at the same time, when I'm working, when I'm working as an attorney, when I'm going to court, I don't want being trans to be what's in front of people. Right. I want an attorney to be in front of people, and that's why Monica's advice is so valuable. How do you feel in this? It's good. You like it? Yeah, no, I love this outfit. I think you look really cute. I'm feeling like, you know, mm. we're gonna go get your ears pierced today. It's mm -hmm. like a big celebratory moment. Yeah. So why not dress up? You wanna go for the dress? Let's go for the dress. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Dress? dress. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. this looks really we're good. We're cramming a whole lot you know? of experience into a very short period. So I actually listen to what she says. Oh, I love Oh, it's cute. Okay, really cute. Let me fix the boot. I say we do this, okay. right? We're good. Why not? We've been kind of overdrawing her upper lip a bit because women tend to have much less space there than men. So that's kind of a feminizing technique. And then we also- So when I was in high school, I got a job working for Nordstrom's and it was my first retail job. I would work the late shifts. And so I'd be there from, you know, four to 9 p.m. And pretty regularly around like 8, 30, 8, 45, close to closing, guys would come in and they would say that they're shopping for their girlfriends. I'm sure that some of them were probably actually shopping for their girlfriends. But I'd be like, so Mark, like, tell me about your girlfriend. What does she look like? Like, what's her taste like? And they would describe her to me. Open. And for whatever reason, um, something just didn't really ring true. I thought to myself, maybe this person is uncomfortable, perhaps they're shopping for themselves. And so I would select clothing that I knew would fit this individual that would ultimately feminize his shape, and I would put them in a fitting room. Within the 90 days that I worked at Nordstrom's, I was like the number one salesperson in the store. Are we good? Okay. That was sort of my first taste of the world of gender expression. Turn towards me so I can adjust it. Kind of seeing that things are not always as they seem. 
I don't I kind of have conflicting feelings about it. Like I've spent my whole life trying not to conform to some like archaic vision of what being feminine is, which to me seems like this 50s poster of this like I love Lucy type, like putting, you know, cookies in the oven and getting the home ready for when our husband comes in. To me, th this seems like it's for men. What do you think? It looks great. Do you feel like, okay. Cool. Saying this, I don't have any uh, like feelings inside me that I'm not in the right gender. So maybe that would be more important to me. It looks really good. It's something that I don't really know about. There we go, perfect. To have some degree of success in the professional world. I don't want to be a distraction, but before I started working with Monica, I would say that my view of femininity was limited. It didn't occur to me, ridiculous though it may seem, that at age 65 I had to dress differently than I did when I was 25. Great but, example of something that one should never wear. Yeah, that's pretty hideous. This is really good for like a Madonna party, you know? Yeah. Okay, my ex-girlfriend got me that. What year? I would say a running theme has been that the first time I see what somebody brings, it's too tight, too low cut, too short, too sparkly. Is this a shirt or a dress? Yes. <laughs> Those features really speak to how men are taught to fetishize women and how men are taught to be attracted to women and sexualize women. And that's why they appear in every closet of every person I've worked with, regardless of their economic status. So like once she puts it on her because of the size of her upper body, it's like, Vag grazing. Yeah. It's really short. This point. Mm. Short. You, but you look so happy about that. Was, You're like, yes, it is She's like, it's vag grazing. Vag grazing. And, and that's what I was looking My for. My date was not upset about it. I think that a successful transition has a lot to do with wealth, sadly. Yes, my clients are affluent. My clients have been making money as well-educated, mostly white men uh, for the vast majority of their lives. <laughs> for me, it's more about offering my clients an opportunity to not have surgeries and not have to have a scalpel taken to their face. Uh, I'm Gina and this is Lorenzo, my little guy. Felix is my brother. He uh, was born uh, female biologically, and I was born male. And last summer, we both came out to each other, almost coincidentally, as trans. Um, <laughs> we, we waited until our, our mother, our father passed away first. Our, we waited until our mother passed away, and then, and then we waited a few more years after that, just in case. She, she came was, back. Right, in case she came back. <laughs> Time. Yeah, so I want to make sure that she stayed. Well, can I sort of, I, I can see why you're here. Um, but Felix, what is Monica going to teach you? <laughs> I, I mean, can, can, can you tell me what, what it is about her service that you're needing? I mean, I feel like straight cis women probably have a lot to teach about masculinity or at least what women look for in masculinity. Especially you can definitely see some trans people uh, taking issue with trying to mimic heteronormative gender. Uh, it's, it's something that I am often taking issue with myself, but also I want to be more masculine. So I have really conflicted feelings. What is your goal here? Is it that you want to go through society passing or...? Yeah, um... You know, passing is kind of a, a loaded term because it yeah. sounds like you're fooling somebody. And I'm not trying to fool anybody. Like, if someone wants to know if I'm a trans person, yes. As much as I, I'm weird about the word passing, it's also safer if people just assume that I have always been male. It's like, I'm not going to get murdered that way. And I would like to live in a world where this was not the case. But while I do, I guess I need some, like, masculine armor to be like... Yeah. And I suppose is that need to like go to the deli, get yourself a sandwich without it being some big political statement. Totally. Yeah. I mean, not every trans person wants to be a trans warrior. You don't want to be a warrior all the time either. Sometimes you just want to... Sometimes you just want to yeah, go to the deli and get yourself a sandwich. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Hey. Nice. Great. Thanks. I really like this. How do you feel? <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, 
Like very, like, very masculine. Right? Like, like I look hulky in the shoulders. Yeah. yeah. These patches are really what does that. So putting like a bold pattern in the upper part of the body makes it look bigger. Looking good, <laughs> standing up straight. I love it. There are some people that want to stand out. There are some cis people that want to stand out and some trans people that want to stand out. My clients aren't that. My clients are coming to me because they want to feel safe. In, in your opinion, do you think it's important for um, trans women to be even more feminine than the yeah, average lady? Absolutely. That sounds to me yes. what you're saying. Yeah. But then I, I see you honestly, Monica, I don't know too many women like you. You know what I mean? Like, you're really ladylike in a way that I'm like, dude, how the fuck do you keep this shit up? But that's just you know what I mean? Just like, and I'll be like on our own putting moisturizer on, like. <laughs> Monica, to me, is something out of a rom com. It's, it's, it's the picture you have in your mind of um, what a woman should be like. <laughs> I didn't grow up like watching my mom just spend an hour doing her makeup. But you know, I, I watched movies and I read magazines and I desired a certain feminine representation. There's like a different elevation in the way people's heads move. Like so if you watch women walk, like their heads are sometimes like much more even. There's not like that mm. much bounce. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Real tall. <laughs> Meeting Michelle was really interesting. Here she is, this beautiful goddess of a woman, wearing these button downs all the way up, like covering all the skin, all of the boob. So clearly she finds it empowering to be more conservative. And I find it empowering to be like, I have this like feminine beauty and I love it and I want to share it with you. I want to share it with the world. I want to show it off. I have started walk around presenting as female here. I haven't done a whole lot of it. And I feel that I need to be a little bit careful, but I'm getting more confident. That's a big credit to what Monica's doing, is just helping me feel like I'm not like some little weirdo in the world that is just a target for harassment. I have not seen my sister present as feminine yet. But I have noticed she does seem way happier, also way more like fierce. Let's see if I can actually put the fast. forms inside of it, mm -hmm. and that way you won't have to worry about these sticking to you at all. Oh, okay. you Any cis woman off the street may not be a good authority on that, but Monica has really done her homework and really like put in a lot of time with trans people and really taken a lot of careful effort in getting to know us. Do you mind if I adjust it? Oh. Okay. It looks really natural. Does it feel natural? It feels natural. Okay. It feels like and okay. that's a really wonderful feeling when you're entrusting someone with things that you ordinarily wouldn't tell anybody about. The first time I did it was the first time that I'd experienced this feeling of kind of empowerment as an artist. The whole objective to feminize your face is mm -hmm. to make this part of your face look as wide as possible, which really means we want to draw the eye like, to the outside corners, mm -hmm. right? Because it's yes. really about framing your eye shape. Right. Okay. This ability to take these products and these brushes and these colors that I have and create an image that really, you know, reflects the insides of this person when they look in the mirror. And so, you know, standing back and watching a person see themselves the way they've always imagined themselves for the first time was pretty profound for me. And, you know, after that first time, it became something that I was chasing in a way. And so then how much cardio do you have? So let's get started. So the obliques are something that you actually see people working wrong in the gym all the time. I'd say 90% of people don't want bigger waist. I have um, like a body that is completely at odds with what I want. Okay. You want to keep that Hips, same, so it's really butt, that's waist, all this stuff is okay. completely out of proportion. The, the more you start working other things. One last one and then you're going to pulse to the ceiling. But when I'm like this or even more feminine because I blew half my makeup off exercising, then I feel present. All right, babe. The color. A color. Let's try a color. You wanna try a color? Alright. I would say no tortoise shell. No gold. 
to assume that makeup and movement and wardrobe is frivolous. That's fucked. When I think about the many iterations of feminine self that I presented, they're endless. The black diamonds are really cool. Can we see that? Yeah, of course. They didn't have that time in life to experiment and feel pretty. Smile. There you go. And once they know how and once they know that they can, then they can take it down a notch. Then they can wear a hoodie to work and stop wearing makeup. So I'll tell you what okay, I'm getting nervous now. I really like these. I think I'm gonna choose these. Once their gender is validated, and once they feel validated in themselves. Done. Done. You okay? Awesome. Then they can move forward and present comfortably however it is. Wait until you see them. That's the next part. <laughs> I'm losing it already. It's okay. <laughs> You're not crying because it hurts, right? Not at all. <laughs> okay. There's, you know, a billion different types of people in the world. There's no right or better version. The fact that I've arrived in a community carving out a niche that I'm passionate about. <laughs> I'm good, how are you? With a career where I get to empower people to live authentically, it's kind of beyond my wildest dreams. I'd want to part it like on the side or something. I feel like I have a lot of clients that would like this. And on them it would be just like a smidge shorter. Femininity is a personal choice. I affiliate with a certain style and a certain attitude. Oh my God, I'm my mom. <laughs> I am kind of a high femme representation of what femininity is. This is good for my clients, though. If someone wants to wear a dress, like, let them wear a dress, you know? Just shave your legs first. This is my you walk. I did not walk like that. Show me your walk. Okay, this is, your this is my walk. Yeah, I want to see your walk. OK, see, it's like very confident. It's very feminine. And so you'd be happy if one of your clients Yeah, I look like this. That's a great walk. Yeah, show me your walk. How do you My walk? regular walk.